Okay, see, hope everyone enjoyed their first talk. We are on track two. Uh, let's see, I don't have any other announcements really, so I ain't gonna do too much opening here. Uh, David here works at CenturyLink. Uh, if you don't know much about the Kansas City security scene, uh, CenturyLink happens to house a lot of bright minds in the security community. A lot of the core members of SetKC, in fact, work at uh, CenturyLink, so again, a lot of smart folks out there. They have been awesome about dedicating their free time to telling us about what it is they know, sharing that knowledge, and making us all stronger as a result of that. Uh, so, yeah, oftentimes we have uh, uh, hackers that are attacking us, and uh, who best to uh, hunt down those hackers than other hackers? So, without further ado, let me give it up to David. Take it away, sir. <laughs> Um, so, 
basically at a heightened alert if they went under connected to a time operator. So they passed the collect feed that would operate in the face of some of those things. So um, as you can see, there these are all the specific known threats over here on the left. And then the um, the the size of the circle is the amount of times that it's hit, so to speak. So you can see like where different applications of actors in that beach right here are to be attacked. So we can even go even further and look at something that looks like a specific breach. And so you can see the attribution of a breach. So if you monitor the, the IOC, which they belong to from sector to sector, you can actually start that. Out over a certain period of time, one of the really cool things we're able to do with this is you can start to do statistic analytics on when a organization is going to attack another sector or a country or, or an organization like that. And for my community, I know what that actually is. That's not them like, okay, we're going to do it at this time because that organization is doing this and that time or whatever. No, it's actually going to have a really big calendar on the wall. And Bob is going to take his kids somewhere on the weekend. They're going, I can't operate in our war room on this day. So I'm going to do it on the first week of the next month. And they schedule it. It works really great for me. We work on nights. You know, he said Bob, but he like that with the rest of me. Um, so you kind of get the idea of how it works. Um, and so being able to do that specific analytics on that and be able to schedule and identify when people are doing things. Because not one operative is going to be performing actions against every sector. They're going to learn everything that they know about a sector and the companies within that sector in a country. Um, so some of the ways that we're um, doing it, I sort of went through this one slide a little bit quick. We monitor outbound DNS activity and inbound email. So that's kind of how we're able to take those uh, classified IOCs and monitor for threat attribution and so on and so forth. So I came online on this program about three years ago. We had all this stagnant data. And I was like, we gotta be doing more with this guy. We can't just be monitoring flat IOCs. Why can't we you know, be performing something like advanced algorithms against this DNS data that we have in there? Why can't we be doing pattern-based you know, analytics against it? Why can't we be doing you know, exposure algorithm, the exposed attributes of a packet, of a DNS packet, why can't we be going through there so we can identify DNS tunneling and so on and so forth? We're able to do all that. We're leading up to how we were able to do an open source exercise of hunting known as So if you're wondering why you talking about all this, we're getting that. Um, I promise. So the way that we pull that information in, pull it in, uh, active blocking, but then extract features that we need in order to build models. And as we build those models, kind of see the way um, you know, each model requires a specific number of attributes and a specific amount of time period in order to perform known analytics. One of the other ways that we're doing those, as we're seeing known breaches and our sector-based partners come back to us and talk to us and say, well, it was like this, and it was like that, and we did like this. Well, guess what? There's a database for that, and it's called the MITRE ATT&CK database, the GTP technique for doing that. So we're able to actually take um, their information that they're giving to us um, about classified information on the other side because they're giving this information to us unclassified. So now I can take these attributes of known threats, apply a MITRE ATT&CK platform to it, and then release that information back to the community, and guess what? Energy sector is being targeted by this organization like this. And be able to point specifically to something in an open source platform to say cover down on these. So it's really good, they're, you know, MITRE ATT&CK is not storing um, the Sorry, I'm talking really fast. Every time I talk, I get really nervous. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, so my attack not currently storing sector or time-based breaches, but we're talking to Katie about being able to, you know, Katie Nichols is sort of the um, spokesperson for that platform right now. So we're sort of working with her about, hey, can we start to push some of this information or you can have another uh, table to be able to store it. So hopefully that comes out. One of the things that we do have, which is pretty sweet, so just to let you know, is they actually have, so these are non-shared TTPs for different active groups. So this is APT 28, 29, 3, 32, 37, Absolute, Cobalt Group, Dark Hotel, Elderwood, Equation, Quick 7, Honeybee, so on and so forth. So these are TTPs that are not shared with any other group. Which means if you see this, what that means is um, we were doing a, a research project on the collaboration of TTPs across active groups. Are they sharing it with other groups in order to attack this in the um, Answer is yes, and we're able to prove that, but we're not talking about that today. We're not going to get into it. Um, but in the process of doing that, we were able to identify there's actually some that aren't shared with anybody. No one else in the market 
is using log on scripts, for instance. Okay, except for AP28. So if you see that in your network, you came to the conclusion that, that you know, with a high probability of certainty, that's going to be 28. You know, monitor that for down on it. That may just be because other ones aren't being reported, but it is actually kind of a difficult and, and a, a long, persistent process to be able to do that. Anyways, we kind of get carried away. But um, now we're going to kind of get into Ocean Lotus. The Ocean Lotus infrastructure, uh, they kind of give out a, a, a big report on it and sort of a PSA, public service announcement on how they're able to capture things and what they're doing to monitor and stuff. So they released a specific number of IOCs on them and the infrastructures that they were using to target and fingerprint um, people going to their sites. So basically what that means is, let's just say you have a, a bunch of victimized infrastructure over here. You guys own a website, mompop.com. I don't know what that is, if that's a website, I am not responsible for that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, they gain access to this, and they put a JavaScript page on that, and it feeds back to something that's owned, to, owned by them, and it feeds back, you know, so that's their C2 platform, that's their victim infrastructure, be able to funnel back, and then funnel back to their, you know, operating workstations or something. Specifically, you know, around the right information, profile of information collection, whitelist of targets, strategic target targeting JavaScript, and then multiple backdoors, like a walk strike in the terminal. Even further, malicious JavaScript designed to profile and fingerprint each visit. Guess what? They're using a deep framework in order to um, target. Is anyone here familiar with the deep framework? Okay, good, just a few people, okay. Well, the deep framework is actually, it's built into Kali. It's something that integrates with uh, the Metasploit platform to be able to monitor when users browse the websites so you know what they have posted in their browser or what you can potentially export against them. It is a, uh, it's an open source platform that a uh, nation state organization has taken and tweaked a little bit and is using. Um, that's not abnormal, we see it all the time. It's something that's free and easy to use and works really, really well. So um, after we kind of came through this, uh, this is how they're doing that. We're able to take this open source report. And again, we wanted to do this. We have all of this content plus we can't use in the open source community. So we know that these are the right answers, but we want to be able to do it from an unclassified perspective. So we can actually give the information back to the community. And this is based on what we're doing and stuff like that. So from the victimized infrastructure, there was one stream of the website that was browsed to and, and, uh, and used um, from two different sectors. One is the comm sector and energy sector targeted. This is, this is one of many websites that was hit and we were able to see comms back and forth to it. The way that it worked, again, a bunch of victimized infrastructure pointing back to an IP address or multiple IP addresses in our servers. And as those hit them, came back to the different spot. So a known piece of infrastructure and the way that it's performing its actions, we're able to take that and model it to say, where else are we seeing this again? In any NetFlow activity, in any routing activity, are we seeing this anywhere? Being centrally, and you know, and we've purchased uh, level three, we have access to a lot of backbone data. So we can passively monitor a lot of this stuff. Are we seeing anything that looks similar? Are we gonna potentially block this? No, of course we don't have those rules and regs where we can just block your stuff for you. Um, but we can actually push it back to the vendor to post that piece. So this is kind of the way that it worked out. Um, again, sort of going through this ad query, uh, sorry, ad jQuery.click, which is an ADP.js. Just a operative right here. Small <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> bad. Yeah. <laughs> Your shirt today. Um, <laughs> the, uh, and so uh, we actually went in and took a look at this JS file, and it really is a duplicate copy of the V framework JS file you support. So um, it was like two things changed, but because of the majority of the content that was in there, we moved the shirt. Um, that's really that. And again, uh, the malicious JavaScript makes calls over HTTP or XPS, attacker control domains, typically load <coughs> one or two different o ocean loaded frameworks. You know, you have an app exploitation platform on the back end. Depending on what type of exploits you want to use, you can either use open source exploits or zero-day exploits if the target is really high profile. Uh, so we also noticed that they were uh, targeting the .gov space. Obviously, I can't give you that information, but um, you know, it was just in the commercial space. It was also carried over in the .gov space. Um, so we saw the exact same infrastructure being used there in the same sectors, mind you, which is uh, a little bit abnormal. And so the way that we are seeing it specifically, 
we have a, a, a domain mapping to a specific IP address, and these two IP addresses both victimize infrastructure, so that kind of leads us to believe that they may have gained access to the vendor and not the site themselves. And then, um, you know, the routing, so basically taking this information from the open source report, what's over here, and are we seeing anything that looks similar to what we're seeing over here? And the answer is yes, we're seeing it like this. Now let's go back for the last four months and see how often we are seeing this and how many other websites, these IP addresses that are active on the infrastructure, how many other websites do they talk to? We have a profile of information capture back and push it back to the community, allow for us to identify the routing of specific text locations. So much faster than I was expecting. <laughs> um, so basically, we are actually done. But um, it's like uh, the fastest one hour talk in the world. Uh, but what we can do actually, if you guys want to talk about anything specifically, we can focus on something um, or we'll go over anything else. Um, yes, sir. Um, I, so this, the, only, the reason why you have this information is because it's an IP. Um, let's define this information. Uh, being able to map out where these IPs are going to and all this stuff. I would say that the answer to that is actually no. You can pay for it. Commerce is an organization that will give back home data across. I mean, they just have sensors all over the place, and you can actually pay for that. Um, okay, actually, the question you asked is the only reason that I have the data because that works for an IP? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, we are not paying Commerce, but you can do it. So you can also have yeah. Other questions? Yes. What are your thoughts on MITRE Caldera? Um, sorry, say that a little bit. Uh, what are your thoughts on MITRE Caldera, the post exploitation like simulation? Right. Um, so you're talking about the, the, the leveraging of techniques or um, tactics within the network after the initial exploitation occurs? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's actually great. I think as long as the information is accurate, and it's good that our community is able to share Yes. How much of the TTP and IOCs that you were using in the open source NetFlow came from cross prime that tips you off that you're looking for? We are not allowed to use any of that. So um, for me to say that I do not know that information would be a lie, because of course I do have guilty knowledge, but none of that is used in here. So we are not allowed to do that. Okay. Um, so in this particular case, the, the leveraging of our TTPs for active groups is directly attributed to open source reporting. Gotcha. That's a great question. Else? Yes. How did you know when the internal micro websites were saying they injected the JavaScript? How did, how did they keep, how did you detect that? How, how did we detect that? Yeah. Yeah. So they're uh, they're routing their traffic through our infrastructure, and as they route through our infrastructure, they can actually see if it's an HTTP request or anything like that. I can actually use that JavaScript page and take a look at it. Everything that's routed through, go out and hit that. Does it look like something I've already seen before? Does the signature act similar? Does the um, you know any type of uh, uh, the, the comms with the, with the website is a little similar to the IP that's been addressed in the past. That's a great question. Yes, sir, yeah. Uh, yeah, so with, have you seen a push in recent years that they're, like, from the government side, that uh, stuff is trying to be pushed down at an unclassified level to be able to assist efforts like this? Um, question was, is there a, 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 a push in the .gov space or the .mil space, DOD or, or whatever, Intel, to uh, declassify things or unclassify things? Which one? Uh, oh, well, yeah, this one. Yeah, whatever the tech yeah. Help, help this. Um, yep, in order to, to do stuff like this. So if an organization uh, that we work with has a need but has no access, what we do is we'll submit a downgrade request. Downgrade request does not declassify something, but it gives us temporary uh, permission to share with an organization, and they can't share with anyone else. So they have you know, gag clauses, of course, you know, where we can't go out and give this information to anybody. The reason that this is, is not because the information we're sharing, we just don't want to give away, it's because of the way we got it. Um, somebody somewhere is sitting somewhere and giving us information, and we need them to be alive. Good night, Sherry. Um, uh, um, so anyway, so yes, and, that, and that's just the, the, way, the way we get it. So. Any other questions? Uh, first, yes. Do you have the website to describe the details for this book? Um, so I, I, I stopped being a Persian linguist because I lost 10%, I stopped 10, 15% of my hearing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you have the website to to, be, to describe the detailed work, the, the, details, the details about your work? About my work? Yeah. Um, 
No. <coughs> um, so you're saying, can, can you go somewhere and read about the, the information about what we're doing? Yeah. Um, no, but we can attend conferences like these. Um, <laughs> are you going to share this PowerPoint? Um, we can share information on this PowerPoint and get, get it from her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. We do have a very specific symbol. We can't actually give it to other people because if you alter it and we represent it, that's centrally stuff when we're saying these things. That's why we don't give you a, a document where you can go in and change things. Um, and that, that's, I mean, I, I don't make those rules. You need to contact CenturyLink because the multi-billion dollar company that's probably not going to do that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm 100% happy to have as many conversations as you want to about how you could also be doing this as well. You, you could do the exact same thing with non-classified information. I mean, 100%. And if you have questions about those, you want copies of Python, advanced algorithms for DGA, exposure, pattern base, you know, anything like that. I'm, this is not our stuff. We just stole it from other people's CAP white papers and just, well, figure it out and see the work. It works. So it's great. So what is the output? Where the, is this stuff, is this just Intel given back to the government? Or so is the protection of those government entities or the ones with the special contracts? So uh, what, what, where does this go? Right. So can I, can I just rephrase the question so I can answer? Sure. 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 So you're saying, what's the point of this? Uh, right. exactly. <laughs> okay, so uh, are we are we rep are we pushing back and having these IP addresses and these servers owned by you know foreign intelligence organizations taken down, or are we feeding it back to other people or something like that? Is that right? right. Or the other you know or maybe the industry you mentioned the industry maybe back yeah. to energy sector access sure. and IoT for right. the um, automotive and whatever. Yeah. Right. Well, um, for right now, because of the way that we're collecting the information from our from our known organizations and the, the routing of um, open source data, it is being pushed out on a lot of CenturyLink's threat intel feeds, which unfortunately are paid for feeds. So again, I'm not allowed to push out anything for free unless of course it's burned, like this. So <laughs> don't try to block these because they're probably owned by somebody else now. Um, anyway, so that's that, that's basically it. Um, I mean, CenturyLink is in it. They're not a non the work. So, before we, uh, sir, one second. In the back, because I skipped you. So, from the time that you guys are notified by the government or any other entity, such as Microsoft or Amazon, that a campaign is occurring, how long are you guys usually sitting in monitoring mode before taking out the infrastructure of these uh, APTs? 150 million days. We do not take down infrastructure. Okay. So, the, the intelligence community, I would tell you, would rather watch what happens before they take them. So is Microsoft and Amazon kind of on their own terms when they work with law enforcement to take down? Yeah, you're saying you're saying if these are hosted by those organizations, right? Yeah. So um, yes, and 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 my, you know, you're saying like if we're given the information from Microsoft to where we're at, that's not really the way that we get our information. Um, we get it from intelligence organizations, um, and so if it did come from Microsoft and say, "Here we have this, block this information," um, Microsoft would have submitted a, a, a you know a request to have that infrastructure taken down first. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. So I, I would not do it. Yes, sir. Is this a service that you're doing for your customers, or are you doing this on the kindness of your heart for everybody? Yeah, it's a service. It's not, we're not the only ones that do it. It's a, uh, there's three tiers um, right now that do it. Uh, Lilo's was doing it before they sold their branch to that Italian company or whatever it was that they did. Um, so basically like, all of their cybersecurity brands just got sold to an Italian company, but they were doing it prior to that. <coughs> now it's uh, now it's AT&T and Verizon and the other two people who deal with this service, like ECS or E3A and IPSS. E3A and IPSS is for the .gov space, ECS is for, I mean, they're like mirror services. Okay. Yes, sir. Can you be able to store uh, traffic uh, it's, it's outside the scope of our, our targets. So is that, you know, you're saying Tor, so we said, I just watched um, um, Avengers Shane again, so I wanted to make sure you weren't saying Tor. But yeah, so Tor. Um, <laughs> Tor is outside the scope of what we do because they're, they're not all owned by one of the or terrorist groups. It would just be alert to see who else? Yes, sir. Um, so obviously there's a lot of APKs out there. A lot of them share their code. Right? Um, so or still one other. Yeah. Or okay. still one another. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
something particular in your criteria that you guys set up, like, okay, this particular part is 32, this is 27, <coughs> and yeah. the new group can add another one? I mean, yeah. how do you guys differentiate? It was class and class based on your command, that's right. Sorry. Yeah, how, how we collect and identify our OCs would be something we can identify. Yeah. That's a great question, though. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. So, um, so the next question was, because you're using AI, are you seeing any movement uh, towards the concept idea of being able to do predictive analytics and block before something happens? Um, yes, that's kind of where our exposure and our pattern-based algorithms come into play, where we can identify um, malicious infrastructure that's, that's previously unknown. So there's no information about it right now that's, that's bad, other than it meets every other attribute of known bad. Um, and so, as we monitor for down that, the answer is yes. However, I'm a big stickler on that. That is not, um, I would not call that AI. I would just call that data science and machine learning. Um, and so, uh, in, and even in machine learning, I would, I would still need to be careful stepping into that because it's not, um, it's not, it's structured and it's not, uh, on, uh, doesn't, doesn't operate by itself. I don't call it AI. It is, yes, definitely, yeah. Anticipatory, but I mean, we, we call it AI. Yeah. Anything else? One for two on the uh, the government basically base tax. I know DOE and DOE are very, very high on the Okay. So it didn't actually get to be all the way to Okay. Um, what are some other entities on the way that work for the Temple that we can be using? So we are very resistant to the fact that we could be a target. Okay, sure. I would, I would say, I would just caveat, I'm just interrupting, I'm so sorry. The answer to your, what, if you're going to come to a question, it's not if, it's that you are. I mean, it, it, 100%, I would say that if you think, if there's any doubt, there's no doubt. You're definitely a target. They're not, like, organizations are not going to attack and target the doc, you know, the doc up spaces by themselves. Sometimes you see blanketed, you know, emails that go out. Like, th those are not your targets. That's just sort of a buck, buck shot game. If you're not looking, you know, you're not looking specifically at the targeted infrastructure, they're going to use you to get to them if they're that's your target. So um, if, if you do that and you go to work, you're a commercial board, and you do work with the .gov space, you are a target. Um, that's just uh, unfortunate. Is that your question? Like, should you be concerned? Yeah, you should be concerned. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So you're from Maryland. Um, I live in northern Texas right now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, yes, I would say yes. I would say for uh, the, the foreign intelligence organizations that don't have funding, that don't have a lot of funding, like Vietnam, North Korea, so on and so forth, they're either stealing uh, money from other people, others use, using these tools, or free tools, for sure. Um, you know, one of the other, again, one of the other presentations we go through is um, the contrast comparison of TCPs across the board from the attack matter framework and any shared TCPs from group to group. So I'm seeing like tool sets and anything like that where uh, where we can say, hey, you know, how in the world is um, Pakistan and North Korea the only people using this like really advanced technique while well, they're being taught by someone else and who's teaching them. And so go back and when's the last time we saw that? When did we see it published? When did we see it used initially? Oh, we saw it used initially. This is not true, but I'm just making this up. We saw initially used by China, like six months ago, and now it's being used by both of these organizations. It's a pretty good indicator that China's teaching North Korea and Pakistan how to teach. Um, and so basically monitoring timeline activity in the internet now. Yes, sir. So kind of more back on the privacy question. Right? Okay. So only this group in your work, you know, organization I work for collects Netflow data into two. Yeah. Um, you know, Typically, the net flow data gathering is under the guise of network management, though. Um, but that's where it plays in for, um, I mean, because I'm security, but when you talk about a service provider, yeah. if you're not buying, if I'm not buying security services from you, then actually I am a local security customer. Sure. Uh, 
Um, you know, where does this kind of fall the, into contractually or private material? What what do you know? You know, that you can say, but where else is that that net flow or what? Where's being stored? Where's it being stored? Where's it being moved back beyond? You know, you're a transit provider. And right. If you're, if you're, it's one thing Great if you're, question. you know, for, for if you have a direct circuit to a government agency and you're a service provider. But as a backbone provider, and I'm another service provider who peers with you. Sure. You know, oh, for if you're collecting sure. that Netflow data, I would, I would beyond, I mean, to me, that kind of seems like something beyond just network management. Sure, but 100%. Or I mean, there's kind of that, or, or how do you protect that privacy of those who aren't buying your product? Who aren't buying your product from peer to work? Sure. Yeah. Um, that would be um, uh, an in depth read of a contract to contract. Let's make sure that actually understand you're giving us permission to do that. But it's the, but, how are, how are you not? How are you? How are you excluding yeah. my data? If I, I mean, well, it's um, it, I, I'm not trying to. No, no, it's but, great. It's, I mean, you're asking you're asking really good, tough questions. But um, essentially, one million dollar company is not going to let me do something that's federally against the law. Um, so just because it's against law doesn't mean it. I, I guess. So, okay, so so you're saying exactly kind of what uh what Leslie just talked about. Like there may just there's not any rules. There's not there's not aware. This is yeah, this is not how large it is with me this right. And so that's why I wonder is, is this Netflow data really coming across to your entire backbone or are you just gathering Netflow data from those organizations that have opted in or have sure. direct relationships with? That's a great question. Um you know, from my understanding we're only using CTLs, CTL being essentially um backbone data. Um whether that's true or not. But that's basically what, I mean, that's not my area of expertise. I'm just that's a lot of stuff that happens in the back book. Sure, that's true, that's true. Um, so, uh, but, 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 but the utilization of that data to identify threats and not feeding that information out to anybody else um, is, is, you know, I, I would say, uh, as long as we don't share that information, we're just using it for knowledge base. I mean, yeah. But I, I understand what you're asking, though. I just want to ask a question. I don't want to answer for a little while. <laughs> but I assume you're focusing on the customers that are paying for this because otherwise it's just too much. You know, you're not going out there and saying, "Oh, it's Kmart, right?" Like, whatever. Are, are they a customer? Are they paying for this? You're yeah. actually focusing on the the companies that are that, so, that are paying you to do this. Sure. Um, I would say, from the perspective of our advanced analytics and monitoring of NetFlow data, it's against our backbone. But, but we have no idea who the IP address belongs to, and I don't have time to be running around querying 500 IP addresses, so and I don't care. Like, who does it belong to? I don't care. Does it match the exploitation framework that the open source reporting? Yes. You know, write up a report, and then and that that's another thing too. Oh, so, so you're essentially you're, since you're selling the service to these other entities, you're monetizing our data. Sure. If we're not yeah. monetizing, right. I mean, right. even if I am your customer, sure. If I don't, if even if I'm a customer. But I'm not buying this particular service from you because I'm not in a dump space. Sure. You're still monetizing my gap. Welcome, well, welcome to the 21st century. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I understand the gap. I'm a messenger. I'm not trying to get this and set it up. Um, yeah. But I'm in the RME space. Sure. So again, in the RME space, research and education. Higher ed, you know, we're really sensitive to this. Yeah. And so that's why I. I knew some of this was going on, but I didn't realize you guys just flat out pulled your whole back up. Okay. Yep. So I uh, don't hold you to that, right? But um, my understanding is, is that part of the wiggle room there is that as long as you're gathering some of the characteristics, but you're not quantifying that down to an individual person like this IP address address belongs to you, then that separation, that attribution isn't there, right? So you can use these indicators of compromise and things like that to say here's some commonality of yes, the metadata. We're not really associated as far as I understand, it's not being associated with individual customers or people. So that's right. Not right. right. But the, the difference here though is this isn't like to give back to the US intelligence agency like a bunch of stuff. You're just using that to sell another product. It's derivative. So yeah, I'm, I'm sorry I'm sidetracking. No, it's okay. So a good, what you're saying right now is a, is a good point. Let me clarify something. 
the IOCs that we're using here are not something we start actually blocking. It's not something we'd be allowed to do. So I can't say, hey guys, I'm doing all this research and I'm, we literally go back and say, hey, community, we're seeing these spaces, let's take the temperature and have a health check. Um, so, you know, adding our own IOCs to this stuff is just not stuff for us. So we can research on things and help the challenge. So you, you talked a lot about using your position as a backbone uh, to use your algorithms and analytics to find targets and actors and all that. Do you, do you source data from other sources like conventional and social media to help identify no. targets and actors? No. That would be the collection of U.S. person data we're going to get that. Uh, based on OBSC tools and guidelines. Yeah. We are not intelligence people, we're not in the gut space. We work for commercial organizations. And we're very strict. Like we all come from the, the, the Intel Go space, so we know what the rules are. We have to take that pretty training. You know, <laughs> we have to take that like I take the test 12 times before I pass it. So I know that information. We're not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. So, any other questions? Yes, sir. I have a question. I'm pretty sure I already know the answer. Pretty much most of that back, like some of the IP addresses that you said, you see that possibly you might need to contact an organization that maybe might be attacked by this. So some of those IP addresses maybe get pushed back to the open source or like the names are bad so they might be pushed to other you know open source you know block lists that say hey these are bad they're not good and it's some more of that are we pushing the information back out um you know unfortunately i don't know the answer to that because we're giving it back to the intel community and letting them make those decisions we're not like we will not give them this is how we know these are the source ip addresses we saw right in there again protect provide information of you know, IP address would say, based on the information and known reporting, these are bad IP addresses. Well. So, so when you say the Intel community, though, what is that like DHS? Is that like, what, what is, is that the individual license in some cases? Or the Intel community is kind of a broad term. Can you be right. a little bit more specific? <laughs> using that word intentionally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to get me, man. <laughs> Okay, cool. You know, how do you know it's, I say that, first question is, how do you know it's 